To understand why I switched from Unreal Engine to Unity, we're going to have to take it back a bit to when it all began. Ever since I was young, I've always loved two things, video games and YouTube. So when I learned with a bit of hard work, I could make video games on free game engines like Unreal Engine, and not only that, but record my progress and devlogs and get an audience, I was more than excited. But if you saw my last video, you might have noticed I was a bit frustrated. You see, I have nothing but good to say about Unreal Engine. In terms of capability and features, Unreal Engine is leading the pack with Nanite and Lumen. But in my case, my underpowered laptop simply could not handle it. At the peak of my frustrations, I was making a simple game of Pong, and my computer was glitching objects through walls, and my recording software could only get around 5 frames per second. So, what happened next? I stopped for about a week, and with game development sidelined, I was back to scrolling through YouTube. And what do I find? Every single devlog I watch uses Unity. Now immediately, I'm thinking, this is a sign, this is another path, so should I start over on Unity? For the past month, I've been learning game development, and while frustrating at times, it has been one of the best learning experiences of my life. So yes, without hesitation, I continue my journey on Unity. The last couple of weeks, I've been learning the Unity engine, and from the get-go, I could tell Unity has a way better community than Unreal Engine. There are a ton more tutorials, both from Unity and other creators. I started off with a simple rolling ball tutorial that was presented when I first downloaded Unity. From this, I learned how to get player input, add player and object movement, and create a basic user interface. I also did some research on YouTube to find how to add a little inflation animation whenever the ball collects a coin. After that, I decided to make a little car game and added some basic car movement to this red car. I then added some boxes with physics that fly back over you as you hit them, or you can go be a good citizen and drive around them. After that, I added this close-up perspective, which gives the game a different feel. My next little mini game was this plane game where the plane moves up and down and tries to avoid these black walls. I centered the plane in the bottom left because of a rule called the rule of thirds, most notably used in photography and animation, and it basically just makes your game more appealing to the user. As you might have noticed, the propeller actually isn't moving, so I'm going to make the plane a little more realistic and add some movement to that propeller. Next up is an animal stampede game where you have to hit animals with food before they reach the bottom of the screen. First, I learned how to spawn this pizza from my character's location whenever I press the spacebar. Then, I learned how to spawn animals continuously and randomly with varying speeds. Lastly, I added collision events between my pizzas and my animals. Now, the animal movement rigging wasn't done by me, but it inspired my next project, which was learning the movement animation of objects. Since I wanted to learn more about animation, I decided to make a little squishy cube. One of the basics of animation is shrink and stretch. When we make a cube jump up, the cube first has to load in a squish, then it elongates as it jumps upwards. Now when you land, you first stretch down and then you come back up as when you land, there is an impact. There is also an idle animation, which is basically when the cube is just stationary or not jumping. Now you put all three animations together and you have a squishy, jumpy cube. The very last game of my beginner experience is an endless runner. And the first step to make an endless runner is to have the illusion that you're actually running infinitely, which I made by having a script move my wall so that it would loop around. In the game, you can see that the wall looks like it's looping on so you run forever. Next, I wanted some obstacles to appear. So I made a script, spawn obstacles at one point, and then despawn at another point so that the obstacles wouldn't pile up. 
Now, we all love UI, so I decided to make a game over screen with a play again and menu button with some nice gradient colors. When we play the game, we can see the UI menu pop up with our play again and menu button. And in our menu, I added an option menu as well, although the volume panner does not work. Let's try some of the buttons. The play button works and the quit button does not work because we are in Unity, but if I exported the exe file, it would work. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you, you're amazing. I'm still very new to game dev and content creation. So if you have any suggestions, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. Bye.